Well, the next few hours, maybe the next few days, are going to be critical for OPEC and the oil markets. Yesterday, the OPEC Plus meeting, which was pretty much all but settled with a deal to raise output by 2 million barrels over the next five months, basically 400,000 new barrels per day, ended with some animosity, particularly between OPEC, the group, the Saudis, and the United Arab Emirates. Guys, it comes down to a kind of a, a wonky baseline number, but the bottom line is this. The UAE, which is one of the more powerful members of OPEC, coming in, really, I'm told, by sources inside the virtual meeting at the 11th hour and demanding a change that would effectively allow them to produce more oil. The group has been on a tight quota list since the major production cuts at the height of the lockdowns and the pandemic. They have a deal to extend output by 400,000 barrels per day all the way through December. But then the UAE came in and said, no, 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 no. We want to be able to produce a higher amount of oil by changing our baseline. The bottom line is that they've extended their production capacity, guys, which would allow them to do this. Here's why this matters. For the oil markets, they are looking for a controlled increase in barrels on that market. If the group adds 400,000 new barrels a day, 500,000 new barrels a day, the market is probably bullish. In other words, prices will probably continue to tick higher because demand will outstrip that new supply. However, the reason oil prices are a little wobbly this morning is that there is concern that if the UAE and OPEC cannot come to a deal, could the UAE pull a Fleetwood Mac and go its own way? I'm not saying break up OPEC, Becky, but they want to produce more. Trust me, I have sources on both sides. The UAE is digging a hard line. OPEC may have to take a tough line. The meeting is scheduled to restart today at 10.30 a.m. New York time. We will see if something, anything can get done. This is a big fight between the UAE and OPEC. Do not discount something not happening today. It sounds like greed picking up. And, and Brian, by the way, when you say pull a Fleetwood Mac, all I can think of is the chain, not exactly where you were going with that. But it, let's talk about what happens if the UAE comes in and says, we're doing this anyway. Is it basically up to Saudi Arabia to say, OK, we'll eat it. We'll go ahead and make sure that we don't produce excess so that we can continue to put pressure on U.S. shale producers. Well, that's it. And where's U.S. shale in all this? U.S. shale has been the driving factor of OPEC's decisions for the last five years. U.S. shale, I'm not saying is off the table, Becky, but we know they are not growing their production. Anything like Chevron, the news yesterday, Royal Dutch Shell, the biggies, are actually looking to sell some of their land, take advantage of high profits or high prices, and return some of that to shareholders. Here's the risk to oil markets. Two things can happen. Three things, really. They get a deal done. They add four or 500,000 barrels a day. Maybe the UAE gets to add a little more to the market. The Saudis have to eat a little more to keep OPEC happy. That's probably the, the most normalized outcome. Yeah. If no deal is struck, then they go back to the original deal, which would be very bullish for oil prices, not adding any more barrels on the market. The mm -hmm. third option is the bad one, and that is no deal. The UAE walks away and basically decides... We don't care about the deal anymore. We're going to pump as much oil as we can. Then you get sort of the every country for itself outcome. It's unlikely, but it's not impossible. And that could be bearish for oil prices. We'll bad, see the meeting. Bad for the oil companies. Good news for consumers. Yeah, bad news for the oil companies, but good news for consumers if that's what happens. Because then prices at the pump would eventually, hopefully, come back down too. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.